Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 353 for Monday, August 8th, 2022. And welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And I have to say that I'm sure Paul Kent is in Napomo, California, but he is not here with us from Napomo, California, due to what I will try and kindly say was scheduling confusion. And we'll leave it at that. Maybe me and Paul will have a conversation about that next week. The good news is... I'm not alone. I would never do that to you folks. Today, we have a wonderful guest, Bruce Hilton from Being Petty, which is a Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers tribute band here in New Hampshire, has joined us today. And we're going to talk about sort of the, the music and beyond the music of being in a tribute band. Bruce, thank you so much for coming on Gig Gab. Of course, Dave. Thanks so much for having me. This is a this is a a, a lot of fun for sure. I'm, I'm looking forward to you know how musicians are. We love to talk about ourselves, so this is perfect it, perfect for me. You know? That's it. Yeah, yeah. We we like we like gig gab. When I say we, I mean Paul and I. But I, I'm hoping the rest of the audience we like gig gab because it gives us this the opportunity to talk about things that are generally boring to people who aren't musicians or at least aren't choosing to hang around with musicians. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, like I said, I've I, I I have listened to a bunch of your your shows and I love them. I think they're just great. It's like, it's, it's like, it's almost like that nerd culture that has their own little thing that they're into, into, you know, they're into their own, you know, set of things. And that's, that's what musicians are too. You oh, know? it's so. total nerd culture story of my yeah. life. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm a nerd yeah. about several things and this is most definitely one of them. Yeah. Here, here. So, okay. So it, it, tell us a little bit about yourself it, it, in that vein. How, it, you know, how long have you been playing? What, what, what are some of the sort of highlights of your, career that have led to this phase of things for you okay um well i've been playing since high school yep. which was you know like 80 1980 81 82 sure um and, you know, just been through it all with the, the cover bands and original bands and this and that, um, you know, had some success along the way. I uh, was in a band that uh, got some um, airplay, uh, not just airplay, but I mean, uh, TV and film placements, really? wow. which was a lot of fun doing doing that sort of thing. What, um, what was the name of that band? The Digby's. The Digby's. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Which was, it was, it was a sort of a, a midlife musical crisis at that point because I was working a full-time job. Sure. Still do. And, um, you know, the dream of being the full-time musician was just looking more and more like it's probably not going to happen, you know, with, with a family and kids and, and a mortgage and all that. Um, but then I've, I found that, you know, you know what you can, you can actually send the songs on the road. You can do publishing. You can send the songs out there and let them do all the travel and you stay at home, you know? So that was pretty Interesting. cool. But that's another, yeah. that's probably another, uh, yeah. another topic for we, another show. We might come back to that this episode or maybe yes, a, a future episode for sure. Cause I'd, I'd love to dig into a little bit about like how that process, I, I was going to say how it works. Things change so much that I, I will, I will say I've, I'd love to learn how it worked <laughs> and, and yeah, we'll go right. from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. 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 So then from there on, I mean, um, after that, uh, I was uh, for a few years in a, in a Beatles uh, quote unquote tribute band. We were more of a cover band because we didn't dress like the Beatles, yeah. um, which is a, a delineation that's that's out there, um, you know, for, for debate. But um, we would have looked really stupid in the suits and boots. And, you know, so we just didn't do it. But we had a big show and it was all great and fun and it was a great time and so, it's good money too good it, money in that oh yeah for sure what what okay so now i have to ask which beatles tribute band was that or beatles cover band to be it was called stick. all together now all right okay yeah yep all right and uh um and then and then i got into a sort of a folk trio thing uh with my son connor who is uh uh we started playing together when he was 16 um, he's a real prodigy, he's something else. And we, uh, the keyboard player from the Digby's, Greg Paneer, and myself and Connor started a group called Hilton Park. And, um, 
you know, we we just it was a father son bonding thing, really. But yeah. then it turned into, you know, we we put out an album after a couple of months of just doing it just for fun. I had a I have a studio, and uh, and then long story short, we wound up winning a New England Music Award, you know, for best band in the state of Maine, and and things like that started happening. So there were lots of accolades. There were a lot of you know wonderful accomplishments like that. Um, was there any money? No, <laughs> not really. <laughs> you know, the money just seems to elude us all. Um, but then, you know, uh, COVID hit, that band pretty much stopped. Yeah. Um, and some friends of mine asked me if I wanted to do a one-off show, uh, just doing some cover songs for a benefit locally. And uh, I said, yeah, absolutely. And it wasn't really doing anything. So uh, we decided to pick a couple of songs each that we would have fun doing. I picked a Tom Petty song. And uh, a little while later, the guitar player calls me up and he says, hey, I got a crazy idea. <laughs> I love I was, these for, crazy ideas. Like, yeah. And that's it. From there on, that was it. He says, let's, let's do all Tom Petty and see how that goes. And so, yeah, we, we you know, uh, unfortunately, he had to leave the band. We, we, we had a, a few um, personnel changes, but we really have landed on an amazing group of guys i just i'm just pinching myself it's like oh man have these guys got it going on That's right. um and things started happening very quickly uh we just had our first show in march oh and wow then, i didn't realize this band was that that new that's great we're very new yeah very new okay we just we just started in march and uh, uh we got some attention and we were tapped out to come and play at this big show coming up this, uh, this coming weekend at the uh, bank of New Hampshire pavilion and, uh, or the Meadowbrook, as many of us remember it uh, in Guilford, New Hampshire. Uh, and it's a, for, for listeners who uh, don't live locally and don't understand what that venue is, that's the place I've talked recently about how I went and saw uh, James Taylor and then also mm. saw that Bare Naked Ladies uh, 90s night show. That's where this happened. That, it's also where I saw Luke Bryan recently. So this is yep. a huge venue. Yeah. Yeah. It's like an 8,000 seat concert arena. So yeah. it's first first ever in my life that I've ever played on this stage. So congratulations. All of us. Yeah. Oh, thank you. All of us in the band are just ecstatic beside ourselves. It's We're just, you know, so excited. That's amazing. That's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, and this is a, a whole tribute night with, with what th three or four other tribute acts as well. It sounds like seven total, seven, seven bands. Okay. <laughs> it starts at noon and it goes to 11 and yeah, there's tribute bands for Janis Joplin for ACDC, the cars rush, uh, Led Zeppelin and, um, Prince and us, of course, the yeah. Tom Petty. So, yeah. um, it's going to be a monster of a show. So much fun. That's great. Oh, outstanding. Oh, what a, what a, uh, I, I want to talk to you after that to find out what your experience is like with the logistics oh, yeah. at a venue like that. Right. Cause I mean, yeah. we, we, you know, most of us know what it's like playing, certainly playing clubs where, you know, it's a hundred percent you, then, you mm -hmm. know, there's larger venues where there's, you know, sound and even lighting crew and, and, you know, the, 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 the larger clubs and theaters is usually where most of us, certainly not all of our listeners, we have some Grammy winners who listen and it's a whole different vibe for them, but, but I would love to, to sort of, you know, hear what that's like dealing in a, in a large, large venue like that. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah. yeah I'd be happy to. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. It'd be a learning experience for sure. Okay. So I, what I'm. I, I, there's, there's many things I'm curious about, and I, I do want to talk about the, the music, but I, I'm curious, you know, you started this band and you're seeing some, some very quick success, which is, which is, which is good. It, it means that you, there is interest for what you're doing, but also it means you're doing some of the right things. Generally speaking, dumb luck isn't isn't the entirety of it. Although, you know, there've been times in my life where dumb luck has, has been the driving force of, of things in both. Or at directions. least a contributing factor. Yeah. But, well, it's always a contributing factor. It's just how much is it? Right. Yeah. And, and so I, I'm curious, what else have you been doing? Like, like let's talk about the marketing of, of this. How have you gone about getting the word out and, and pushing this band to, to get these sort of opportunities rolling? Well, it's it's kind of a who you know sort of thing. Um, a friend of mine actually uh, 
is in a Cars tribute band, and they were looking for somebody to open up for them for a couple of shows, and we were looking for a gig we hadn't played yet. So um, they they brought us along, and, and um, you know, thank you so much to them for that. And and they were really impressed with what we did. And uh, this this friend of mine is actually very connected at the Meadowbrook. Um, he Got works it. there, so he was able to talk to his boss and say, "Hey, we're looking for somebody to to fill in." It, it was very fortunate because it, what happened was most of the bands that are at this show are under the the umbrella of this one uh, management agency. Got they it. provide all the bands. Okay? okay, okay. They have a Tom Petty band, but the Tom Petty band couldn't do it because they're playing uh locally like a week but matter of fact they played saturday night uh at the tupelo music hall which is you know just within an hour of the venue and of course large venues like this have the distance clause yep. if you're going to play here you can't play within three weeks either side of the gig 90 mi- within 90 miles and so they were automatically out so they couldn't do it so we were able to step in. It was so fortunate for us that, you know, that that happened, you know, it's just dumb luck, I guess, but, uh, well, you know, it's dumb luck. I, I, I do a couple of other podcasts. One of them is called business brain and it's for, you know, entrepreneurs and small business owners. I mean, it's, it's yep. the same kind of nerd talk, but for that. And, yep. um, one of the things that one of the phrases that comes up often is overnight success takes 20 years. Right. And, yeah. And and you are with this band seeing some some version of overnight success. I mean, it, you know, you started in March, and here you are playing. You know, one of the bigger venues in the state, biggest venues well, in the state. Well, we 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 started playing in March, right? Live. We had actually been working for nearly a year before that. Okay, okay. You know, for for quite a while, just finding the right people, um, putting the stuff together, figuring out the look and everything else. You know, fair, so, fair. Um, but but also, you're leveraging the connections that you've made over your yes. career here. That predates yes. this band's existence. And absolutely. And that's yeah. the and key, I, I, right? You know, it really is. And I had no idea that things would happen this quickly. Um, you know, just, nope. you know, but we're, we're ready. We're ready to take these opportunities and grab them by the throat and go, go for it. You know, I've got the, the guys are, are that good. Uh, the band is that tight. Um, you know, we're just having so much fun at the same time. You know, it's, awesome. it's, it's just a, yeah, the perfect blend. Yeah, of of circumstance and opportunity and and ambition and, um, you know, it's all of those things. Of these things. Yeah. No, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Is is, and and this happens in all kinds of businesses, but certainly the music industry, where, you know, you you do all this preparation, and then there are those moments where, if you're if you're fortunate, where things start moving quickly, and. It's really easy. I mean, it's it's at some level, it's scary, right? You know, it's like, well, wait a minute. You know, yeah. we're, we were cu- we Take were my plan- word for it. <laughs> we were planning on playing small little clubs and now we have to go play this place. It would it would be easy to listen to that voice that says, well, you're not ready. Uh, you, you know, you, you, you might have a gig locally. You probably should say no to this. You know, it's, it's too early. Like there's all those things that can go through your head, but you can't let them. You you just have no. to trust that, OK, take this opportunity because it's not going to come up next year. In fact, pre-show, you and I were talking about this and I had asked you if you'd ever played this venue before. And you said, no, this is your first time. And when I joined this band called Chafed 10 plus years ago, about maybe a year or less before I joined the band, they played a somewhat similar event at this same venue and when I joined, I thought, oh, man, like, this is going to be great. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in. I'm going to I'm going to be able to play there. And and that band came and went and I never have played there. So, uh, it, yeah. you know, you you take the opportunity when it comes because it may not happen again. In fact, it almost certainly won't unless you take it and then leverage it going forward, which is which is great, man. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm not into excuses. I'm not into quitting. You know, I I just something like that comes up. It's like, okay, we will make it happen. Are we ready? 
maybe not but now we have to get ready you you will so make yourself ready yeah yeah we will make ourselves and that's what we've been doing we've been rehearsing incessantly um recording every rehearsal uh sitting down together and listening back to the recordings finding all the little nitpicky things you know um you know in general the 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 audience, the general audiences we play for are your average Tom Petty fans. They may not even own an album, but they hear them on the radio sure. and they like them. You know, they're not the ones that are going to say, oh, you missed that note in that solo, you know. But, every, you know, there are some of those people out there. And, and I think all these tribute bands on this bill, they are like that. They are, you know, perfectionists. And well, so I was going to say you're, gonna play, you're playing with Lotus Land. They, they are, yeah. Their audience is only the perfectionist rush fans right so that's true yeah rush is a whole other animal that's so a whole yeah other animal that's right that's right that's yeah. right so you know we're that's what we're doing we're, we're we've always been shooting for that but now even deeper we're taking an even deeper dive to make sure everything is just you know if if uh if if mike campbell was standing off in the wings with his arms crossed and his head cocked you know at the end of our set if he gives us a thumbs up then that's where we want to be that's yeah. what we're looking for you know Oh, that's great. So, so I w- actually, I want to dig into this a little bit because you said you're yeah. not just rehearsing, but you're recording your rehearsals and listening back. I mean, this is like, well, it, you know, deadlines are great motivators <laughs> and, it, and you've got one, <laughs> yes. right? You know, yes. uh, but you're preparing with intention. You're not just saying, well, if we spend three hours, uh, you know, every Tuesday night playing, we're, we're bound to get better. I mean, there's there's right. some truth in that statement. And and I think most bands are the result of of some level of that truth. But you're well, yeah, you're I've, I've always believed more. that. Yeah. Yeah. I've always believed that uh, practice does not make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. Sound like my calculus teacher, man. That's what he used to say. There you go. He's right, though. You and go. you are right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, you've got to you've got to have a plan. You've got to be able to, you know, you, you know, don't you think? I mean, it's so hard to be objective when you're playing. You can't listen to what you're doing and, and be objective about it or what anybody else in the band is doing. You know, so, yeah, it's invaluable going back and listening to these and even watching videos. We try and videotape a lot of our shows and some of our rehearsals, too. Um, and And it's just invaluable. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, huge, I, huge tool. I, when I was, um, you know, maybe five or six years into my playing, I wound up with this, I syncing up with these guys that did this Tuesday night jam. It never played out, right? Like it was only to get together and play music, mostly instrumental music and mostly original music. And it was rare that we would play the same thing twice. Somebody would come in with an idea, we would explore it and, and, and we recorded everything and we'd spend about four hours together, two hours we would play. And then two hours we would, we would listen back and what an eye opening experience that was for me at that stage of my playing, because I learned exactly what you were just saying. You can't be objective. You know, you think you're playing and you think, oh man, this is it. Like, this is great. Then you listen back to that same moment. You're like, ah, yeah, let's not do that again. You know, but the reverse (laughs) is true. Like, it's like, oh, this is boring. I don't know that this is going anywhere. And then you listen back and like, wait, 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 no, no, that's actually interesting. And, And you know, I mean, it's not always like that, but yeah, you learn, that's really smart. I, I like this yep. idea of not just recording the rehearsals, but then listening together to them with that, you know, putting, putting them under yeah. a microscope. That's smart, man. Yeah, definitely. We, we, and then we listen, we listen individually as well. And we put, uh, we have a Dropbox folder and we put show notes or, or rehearsal notes and say, okay, song by song, this is what I heard. This is what needs to be tweaked. This is what needs to be fixed. Or this is something, here's an idea we could try or whatever. Um, and everybody has access to those notes and we show over rehearsal. We, we did rehearsal tonight uh, a little while ago and uh, that's what we did. And we didn't even discuss the notes. We just set up, just ran down the set and everybody i could hear everybody had implemented what was in those notes um you know without even talking about them beforehand before we started playing it's great that's great so, that okay so that's a whole other level but this is I, i'm so glad you're sharing this with us because this is the kind of thing that that really elevates 
where a band is and can be. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. Wow. Yeah, it's and it's 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 especially important for a tribute band when you're trying to emulate something that exists and 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 get it as close to the original as possible. But yeah, definitely you can take this with any band, uh, original band, you know, cover band, whatever, yep. and benefit from it. You know, uh, and just just bring yourself to that to another level of 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 playing. Oh, I, I think I, I agree. No, what you, what you're saying here, it's like, okay, you know, I, I got to start doing this because we, I mean, for me, it's, it's ridiculously easy the way our, the way my studio is set up. I, I like we play through logic here. And so literally yeah. all I have to do is hit record that everything's already yep. running through it anyway. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> I'm taking some homework <laughs> notes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, let's, um, I, you, you, so we've talked a little bit about the, the music, uh, let's talk about the, the visual, the beyond the music stuff, the visual aspect of this, because live performance, live music is a visual art, no matter what you're doing, you you know, people are going to be watching you. Right. So uh, with what you're doing, you are not just presenting, you are not presenting you on stage. You are presenting a tribute to Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. So you have some specific stuff to think about wardrobe, maybe even gear. I, like how, oh, yeah. how far, how far are you taking this and how, how do you go about it? We've gone, we, well, we started out, let's talk gear. I mean, we, okay. we, uh, I mean, I've, I've had a, a 12 string, uh, Rickenbacker 360 since 1982. So check, uh, you know, and a telly. And, and one thing I know you notice about Tom Petty, you watch a Tom Petty concert, every damn song, they change guitars Yes, just cause they can. Well, and they love guitars yeah. and they love, they love the different tones you get out of the guitar and they love how they speak to a certain song and all that. So we don't change every single song. I mean, you know, that's expensive. Um, we just don't have that many instruments, yeah, well, but yeah. we didn't, we did invest in the right instruments, the right tone, the fender amps. Um, Brian Kelly, the lead guitar player has got the, uh, the, the Duesenberg Mike Campbell signature guitar. That's and awesome. he's playing it through a Fender Princeton, which is what Mike uses and has used for 40 years. And so we're very much into capturing the tones, the essence. Um, Larry, oh my goodness, Larry Ladry is the drummer. And there's a, there's a, if you ever watch the Tom Petty uh, you know, documentary that's yeah. out there. Yeah, the we've talked about it on this show, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a great one, right? Yeah. So, Stan Lynch, he shows up. They show up for the initial uh, sessions for "Damn the Torpedoes," and Shelley, the Occam, the, the the engineer, says, "You know what? Your drums sound like shit." He says, "You know what? We're we're going to go drum shopping," and he so they ended up with a, a set of uh, Tama Imperial Stars. Yeah, and that was like 1979. So my drummer, Larry, I don't know how the hell he did it. He went out and found a set of 1979 Tama Imperial Stars Whoa. and a and a Ludwig Black Beauty, which is yeah. what Stan, Stan Lynch used as well. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. so we've, we, and oh man, do these drums sound good? <laughs> wow. That's I mean, awesome. it's r- leaps right out of the record, right out of the Dan the Torpedoes record. It's just, the drums are just oh, incredible yeah. sounding. Yeah. Well, that was recorded in um, Sound City too, wasn't it? Right. Yes. I think it was. Yes. Yeah. When yes. that room was legendary for drums. And, yes, and then, of course, absolutely. there was that Neve console, too, that, you know, is, is also legendary. But yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we just putting all this, all this, all these tones together. We've even got this. This this is interesting. So we've got a Scott Thurston as well, who was the sixth heartbreaker, uh, the guy that joined like 20 years ago. And he was always there for the last you know 20 years of their career and so my son connor from the hilton park band i was telling you about is in that role he's playing scott thurston amazing so he's involved with the with the show too that's cool that you get to still play with that. that's amazing that's great it's great it's wow. so it's so awesome it's so awesome that's yeah, great connor and i we love playing together we have such a good time that's, that's so. awesome man that's but cool. uh, yeah, so you know, there's there's the instruments and all that stuff, and of course, like you said, the music is is sort of self-explanatory. You know, everybody knows a tribute band is just going to try and play the stuff as close to the record as possible. That's the goal. Yeah. Um, but then do, you get do into you, the visual side. Do you play it as? I, I know I said we were going to leave the music behind, but I'm curious. Do you? Yeah. Is the goal 
the playing to the record or are there some songs where the live version is more what you are trying to capture? <sighs> That's a great question. And that's, you're absolutely right. It's yes and yes. Um, we try and keep it to the record unless um, the live version presents something um, interesting f for in a concert. Or, you yeah. Know, yeah. Uh, Cause you are situation. playing live. Like that's the whole thing. Yeah. 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 So, so is there, a, um, is there a specific example you can share with us? Yeah. So there's, uh, in the song, um, learning to fly, for instance, sure. The live version is completely different from the studio version studios, Jeff Lynn production, very, very big, right? The live version is absolutely beautiful. It's stripped down. It's acoustic guitar. And then the piano and the other instruments kind of sneak in. And there's a big, uh, call and answer thing with the audience where, well, the audience actually starts singing the chorus and that's, that's what we're working towards as well. You know, we don't want to be behind a glass wall. Yeah. Yeah. We, we definitely want to engage with the audience. And so, um, there's a lot of moments in the show where we invite them to sing along with us and, 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 and stop playing so they can do that. And, and they love it. That just makes them feel like part of the show. Absolutely. Just, you know, yeah. Watching it, watching this. So yeah, there, there's a lot of that. Uh, of course, endings, we can't fade out. So we, we, we go to what did they do live to end the song? Yeah. Rather than just, you know, the typical dog shit ending, you know, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> you I know, mean, it, they, listen, it has its purpose. However, sure it does. It, oh, it, absolutely. You know, if you can, if you can not resort to that, every single song, <clears throat> that's even better. So, yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So, um, but yeah, so, so there is a sort of a, a blend of, of studio and live going on. I'd say it's probably an, uh, 75 25 yeah. blend that makes that know? makes perfect sense all right so yeah. it, 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 well now we'll we'll get back on track although i, I feel like we're on track anyway uh you know yeah yeah let, let's so talk the about the visuals side, right? yeah right yeah so i i really thought long and hard about this because you know you, automatically you're gonna say am i gonna look stupid in a freaking wig you know, because I don't, I don't look like Tom Petty. I don't have that hair. If my hair gets that long, it gets so curly, it it just wouldn't it's, look anything like him. You know, that straight blonde hair. Yeah. So, I really didn't know. I kind of, I spent the money and I, I, I went. I didn't get some stupid Halloween wig. Um, I went and got a real quality. It's synthetic hair, but it's a, it's a real quality wig. And it was just a, like a part in the middle and it was like 14 inches long down on my chest, really long wig. Sure. And what I did was I, I brought it to uh, Madeline's uh, who were famous for working with cancer patients and stuff on wigs and, and you know, hairstylists and all that. And I, I had this wonderful uh, girl there that we, we sat there, we, we brought up pictures of Tom Petty on the, on the, uh, on the iPad and, and she sculpted that wig to make it look just like Tom Petty's hair at a certain point in his career, yeah. which was, which was another important thing. I'm 58 years old. Okay. If I tried to look like Tom Petty at, at 25, I'd look stupid. Right. That's a really <laughs> but, good point though. Like you have yeah, to think about that. Yeah, you do. You do. And, but the thing is I can look like Tom Petty when he was 58, um, using a lot of illusionary things, uh, theatrical things. So the wig, right? So I got the right. wig. Yeah. Uh, I've grown out a beard because he typically had a beard in that time frame, and the beard helps cover up certain facial features. So uh. you know, the thing, the key is, Dave, that you you have to you have to take it so far, the fantasy, and the audience will take it the rest of the way. That's it. With man. in, the, That's in their imagination. That's theater. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. It's totally theater. Yeah. So, so the beard covers up the face. I have a pair of like square, uh, rectangular, like Roger McGuinn glasses that I wear, you know, like Tom had in the Mary Jane video or whatever yep. it was. Right. Um, you know, so the glasses cover up my eyes, which don't really look like Tom Petty's eyes, you know, so Smart. all of this cover up, you know, the beard, the, the, the glasses, the wig, and the, and then 
beyond that, you know, of course, the wardrobe, we find some clothes that were sort of hippie meets hobo, you know? <laughs> <laughs> which is the whole, the whole Tom Petty thing. It right? is the whole Tom. What a perfect way to encapsulate, to encapsulate yeah, that. That's perfect. That's it. You know, so we, we spent some money on that stuff. And then, um, and then I started studying mannerisms, just soaking up live performances on YouTube and watching the different mannerisms on stage. The, the most prominent one, I call it the petty bop. If you ever see him, he'll start, especially when he's really into it and the music starts going, um, he sort of stands there and and bends at the knees and kind of bobs up and down yeah at the at the knees you know kind of doing this little the bouncy thing and uh it's like oh he does that all the time and so uh i've adopted that you know, throw that in and a lot of people might not go oh my god he looks just like tom petty when he does that but subconsciously but that's it you're giving them enough clues overt yeah. and 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 otherwise that that like you said give them enough to let them carry it as far as they want to go yeah right because they're there to experience that fantasy yeah so they will fill it in you know, they, they, they want to, they want to fill it in. So we try and bring them as close as we can. And then it's up to them to kind of fill in the rest. But, uh, um, so how about, yeah, like, and then, how about like banter on stage? Like, uh, have you adopted the, like the things that Tom said either verbatim yeah. or, or close enough to it? Some of them. Yeah. Some yeah. of the little, you know, little things he would say. Yeah. Um, some of the things we've, you know, kind of, I've brought from my own sure. repertoire too, but, uh, um, but, and then, you know, and then it's the voice. Tom has a very unique voice. Um, and I, I hear like two or three different voices in Tom Petty. Okay. One of them is the Dylan-esque voice. For sure. He, he has this sort of Bob Dylan-ish thing going on in some songs. And then there are some, I call it the choky voice because I think, I think he had sort of a recessed chin. He had those big teeth, right? Yeah. And and I think his chin was a bit recessed. And so, uh, if you were to take like you, the 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 web between your thumb and forefinger and kind of press it up against your chin, right under your lip, and push your jaw back, right? All of a sudden, you get this different sort of. It sounds like oh. a little choking little thing. Yeah. So it's you know like in the waiting, you know, made me want to live like I want to live. But then when I do this, made me want to live like I want to live now. And yeah. you know, you get that little. It's I'm, no. I, I'm a little hoarse from practice. No, it's but, a little uh, like a, it's that overbitey thing that comes in. Kind the, of, yeah. kind of. And so I think when he moved his jaw and his mouth in certain ways, that sort of cut off his throat a little bit. You know, yeah, and had that sure. sort of. Yeah. choky sound and you you know you go and listen back you'll be going you'll you'll hear it all over the place yeah um and so there's no little, he had things yeah like he that. had a way of being raspy and whiny and yet still full voice uh, at the same time yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. and always on pitch the guy was a great singer yeah well when you compared uh, him to dylan that's i was gonna i was gonna chime. i am i am a fan of bob dylan's songwriting uh yes. he deserves all the success that he has had and mm. if I never get to hear him sing another one of his songs or anyone else's songs, I'm okay with it. So uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm okay with it. I like lots Dylan's of people voice. are, and that's the beauty of art. Like it, it is. Know, yeah, it's fine. I actually put people in, you know, people that sing or whatever in two categories. There are, there are singers, which is yep. Whitney Houston. You know, yeah. people that are trained and and do it, you know, with such, you know, the, those are the Different singers. Different class of people. Yes, for sure. The others are vocalists. Ah. They are vocalizing. They are using their own voice, not something they were trained to do. Petty is a vocalist, not a singer, in my opinion. Ooh, I love uh, this distinction. You know, yeah. Bob Bob Dylan is a vocalist, not a singer. 100%. He's vocalized. Neil Young. Yeah. You know, Lou Reed. Uh, uh, Lou, Lou Reed is the other one on my list with Bob Dylan for the same reasons. Yeah. But but yeah. yes, exactly right. And and again, deserves all the all the credit and success that that he's he's had for sure. Yeah. 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 So, you know, um but yeah, so really digging into 
into the the nuances of his voice and trying to make my voice sound like his as much as possible, which I just did a horrible version of. But uh, you know, I do it much better live. I promise. But <laughs> <laughs> well, the only way someone would find out is to come and see you, which they could do on I Saturday. Know. So there you, you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really hope they do. That'd yeah. be great. We'd love to have as many people there as possible. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, yeah, the, there's all that. Like I said, the mannerisms, the voice, the 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 wardrobe, it all adds up to that fantasy, you know. And I, I'm in my opinion, if you're in a tribute band and somebody has to close their eyes to believe they're there, you're not doing your job. Yeah, it's a cover band, and 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 you know, I mean, I think of the 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 Fab Four, the Fab Four, right? The 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 yeah. the Beatles tribute that Will Lee with Will Lee, yeah, yeah. It, they they did not attempt to look anything other like anything other than themselves. However, right. they went so far with with covering the Beatles. They added they had more people in the band than the Beatles did, so that they could get those vocal doublings and all of those yes. things. Like they went nuts. Right. And the point was, if you want, close your eyes and and you know, and I'll kiss you tomorrow. I'll miss you. Right there, you go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help uh, it. Well done. Well done. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. We're trying to. We're definitely trying to give the the entire experience. You know the 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 like all the things I mentioned, you know, the, yeah. the look, the sound, the, the the nuances, the banter, the, you know, the crowd interaction, everything they were famous for. Um, we want to try and replicate that and, and give people that experience again, because and that's the interesting about this thing at the Meadowbrook is that the the prerequisite for the bands they chose was that you can't go see these bands live anymore yes. because somebody has either died or, you know, they, just, they don't tour anymore or whatever. So they weren't going to put in a band that's a tribute to you two journey or you two or, or something. journey. Yeah. Right. 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 Yep. You yep. know, they want somebody you can't see anymore, which makes it a little more special. Well, and that, you know, we've talked a lot about tribute bands on this show over the years. Mm -hmm. And especially in recent years, as so many of these people, you know, we've done, been doing the show seven and a half years and at, at least three of the bands that are on the bill, you, the, the rush tribute and uh, the beautiful ones, the Prince tribute, all had living members when we started this show. And now, yeah. you know, the original bands, I, I mean, not the tribute bands, but y yeah. you know, now they don't. And, and so like, I, I got to see Lotus land that, that rush tribute the night we all found out that Neil Peart had passed. It, it was, oh my not, goodness. it was not planned. Obviously, you know, we'd had no. these tickets for months or something. And, you know, we found out at five in the afternoon and, and then it was like, Oh, well, okay. An hour later, we're heading over to Tupelo to go watch this band. Well, wow. I can think of no better place to be than with my family. I'm getting choked up even talking about it. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. Know, with my family and, uh, you know, a, a room full of Rush fans celebrating the music of Rush. But it oh, was. Oh, what a way to process that grief that together. Was it. It, that was it. Yeah. And. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It, it couldn't have been more like the universe definitely said, all right, I'm going to give you this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. For sure. <laughs> it was just because, yeah, how did, you know, how were we supposed to start processing that? You know, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but tribute bands serve this purpose now. And, and I mean, more so now than, than they have in the past where it's like, okay, well, you know, the, the best live version of that is going to be someone that's not the people that originally did it. And that's okay. Yeah. You, you know, so it's, yeah. And yeah. you know, there's, there's naysayers out there. There's people that just love to bitch and they just wow. go on about, you know, the tribute bands are stupid and blah, blah, blah. well, you know what? There's, uh, you know, a few thousand tickets sold already. So shut up. So you shut know? up. Yeah. No, we, we talk Somebody. about those as, you know, we always say, the one thing we have to remember, especially when we're on stage and things aren't going well, we've made a mistake. The gear is fighting us, whatever. Yeah. yeah. You know, most it, it w the room is filled with people who are rooting for your success. You know, they yes. would not have left the house hoping for you, hoping to show up and spend their <laughs> evening watching a band fail. Now, we we do always uh Offer the caveat that there is the, you know, the one guy in the back of the room with his arms crossed and the scowl. That's the musician, right? Who's, who's, you know, yeah. going too far and not enjoying it. Or maybe that's their way of enjoying things. But you well, ignore. Because he's jealous. He's right. Jealous. Probably because he wants, he's jealous. 
<laughs> he wants to be up there. Absolutely. He wants to be up there. That's it. I just I just yeah. put a Facebook post out. We we just my wife and I went and saw Alice Cooper and with Ace Fraley opening up nice. at at the uh, Meadowbrook in the fall, this yeah. last fall. Yeah. And you know, it was a great show. We had such a great time, but I there was a, a an element of that guy in the back in me looking up there going God, I'd love to play on that stage someday, you know, yeah. and it's probably never going to happen. I'm, I was 57 at the time. And it's like, eh, yeah, it's, uh, that, sh that ship sailed, you know, and, and then along comes this opportunity. It's like, man, never, say never, never. say never, no. never say never. It, it, it can happen. Uh, you know, if you're, as long as you're persistent and you're still doing it and you don't quit. You know, that's it, it, man. Great things can happen. For yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Well, I, I've, I've, I've said, I'm sure on this show, and I know on other shows that I do, that you know, bullheaded persistence is the key to success in life, or at least my key to success in life. So, yeah. you know, you just got to stick with it. Yeah, but, but there's a lot to that. Yeah, man. And we're fortunate enough to be bullheaded and persistent about something we're passionate about. Yes. You know? Yes. <laughs> Playing music is like, yeah, you know, we, we, we'd be doing it. Shh, don't tell the venues. We'd be doing it for free. But you know what? We don't. No. Because no. we have value. Well, so, that's yeah. and that's the other important part is, it, yeah. you know, it, and it is frustrating when you see, you know, a group of people that are so eager to play that they forget that they are bringing value or at least capable of bringing yeah. value. And then and they go service. play for free. Yeah, it's a service. And then they go play for free. And, you know, that then that starts to it, there's a cascading effect for all of us when things like that happen. And um, uh, part of what we do on this show is not shame people for that, but just inform people yeah, and enlighten. That's, that's true. It does cast. It's like it's like real estate values. Exactly. You know, if, that's if a great you, way of you, looking at it. Yeah. If you sell your house on cheap, it it brings down everybody else's value in the neighborhood, right? That's it. It's man. the same thing. Yeah, it is the same wow. thing. That's a great analogy. I'm going to use that. Uh, we're definitely going to steal that, but we're not going to steal. We'll, we'll credit you as long as we remember, and then you know, within about five years, it'll just become ours. You're going to model it. You're not going to steal it. You're going to model that's it. Right. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I love it, man. So uh, this is great. I, like I, the, this it, for having to do a show where at the last minute I found out that Paul couldn't make the schedule that he made, which again, Paul and I are going to talk about this next week. Uh, I, I feel like this has gone amazingly well. So thank you for uh, being here to step of course. in. Yeah. Oh, my pleasure. Like I said, you know, musicians love to talk about themselves. And yeah. you know, so you give me, you give me a soapbox here. It's just so much fun. Well, I really appreciate it. I, 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 is there anything else you would love to share before we say goodbye for now? I, I have, I definitely want to bring you back so that you can meet Paul for sure. I'd love to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, that'd be great. But uh, is there anything else for, for, for this time around that you'd like to share before we, uh, you know, before we move on? Um, I, I guess just for the folks on the, on the, in the Northeast region that are listening, you know, please come to the show. You know, even if you're one of those people that's like tribute band, ah, you know, you know what, give it a chance, come out and see it's, it's fun. It's a good time. And just engross yourself in the fantasy, just let go. Yeah. And I, I promise you, you'll have a great time. Awesome. And, uh, so that's that's Saturday. The show starts at noon. We go on at like one twenty. Um, but uh, come for the whole show. There's some really fantastic national touring bands are going to be there, um, and and it's it's at the Bank of New Hampshire Pavilion, uh, Saturday, August thirteenth. Awesome. Uh, it's called the it's called the Legends Tribute Show. And if people happen to this show's going to be out. Uh, we're recording this on Sunday night. It will be out first thing Monday morning, uh, which is August eighth. So theoretically people will be able to the local people will be able to hear this and and perhaps uh, get out there but for anyone who either isn't close enough to do this or hears this after the fact where can they find out more about you and being petty and and all of that oh sure um of course we're on facebook um but we're we have a website it's being petty.us like United States. Yeah, perfect. I and, love the uh, name of the band, by the way. It's probably, oh, thank you. Yeah, we 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 were going back and forth on names. All the all the song titles were taken. There's a lot of petty bands out there. Yeah, and all the song the good song titles were taken. We thought about Louisiana Rain, which is one of my favorites, but it's too much of a deep, too cut. deep, too deep. Nobody yeah. knew that it was a petty band using that, and uh, 
you know, for about five minutes, we considered the petty files, but that wouldn't have worked at all. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I mean, it's good, but being petty no, is bad. better. It's yeah. bad. It's bad. It's bad. The petty files? No, 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 no. Uh, it's, it's, just a, it's just a joke. We never we never considered that. Um, it's a joke. No, no I get then, it. Yeah, of course. Being yes. petty was being petty was something that made sense to me. It's like, yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah. And and there's the the, the kind of double meaning joke thing. But uh but in the end, it's like, no, we are being Tom Petty to the best of our ability. Yeah. And the heartbreakers. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we we really thought the name fit well, I, well for what we're Oh, doing. I think it's a brilliant. I'm surprised it wasn't already taken. That that honestly yeah. is like, uh, given given how new this band is, I, I'm surprised that, that there's not somebody else out there with it. But, hey, it's a great name. I love it because it Thanks. just tells people what it is. Yeah, for yep. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Bruce, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. It has been an absolute pleasure to get to chat with you this evening. I I'm not sure if I can make it. I I may try though on Saturday. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've got... I think they're running a special right now. If you buy four tickets, they're like twenty bucks a piece. Okay. Any section, oh. any seat, any section. Interesting. All right. All throughout the place. Because I, so, I have a yeah. gig that evening, but I'm not sure what time I need to be there. And I'm not sure oh. where it is. I think it's over in Brookline. So it, it might actually uh. work to oh. I don't I don't know. I, I, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to I'm looking at a map after we're finished here. Fair Folks, enough. thank you so much for listening. If you have any questions for us or even for Bruce feedback at giggabpodcast.com, you know, we love to hear from you. That's what keeps that's our fuel to keep the show going. Come join our Facebook group at giggabpodcast.com slash Facebook, where we have these conversations all the time. And uh, as my co-host often says, always be performing. 